Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm going to be going through Wind Wraith, which is a generative wave crawl setting toolbox. This is by the Lazy Liches, and I just kickstarted it, well, rather, I kickstarted it a while back, maybe about a year ago, and the PDF has finally been released. Now, you can get this, um, I think, on DriveThruRPG already in PDF form, but you can all, I'll put a link below to where you can also order limited copies of the print run. I don't know how long that's going to be available, but I'll put the link below to where you can get that, and, and I'll also link it to the uh, the drive through RPG page. This is a great product, really, really cool. The art throughout is amazing. If you know Lazy Lich's other things like, um, oh, I've reviewed a couple of their things before, like Willow and products like that. Um, it's great, really, really good. And uh, the art is really good, the composition is great, and this one in particular is amazing. Now, I am always a sucker for pirate themed things and for ocean themed things for island hopping and this book is going to when i eventually run a campaign for pirates and all that stuff this book is going to do a lot of work so let me just go through it it's 178 pages this is the only document today just this one thing i'll, I'll go through it and uh, give you guys a sense of what it is so there's an intro to this setting it's it's not just a toolbox in terms of sort of generic it has a an implied or not an implied an explicit setting but you'd be able to adapt this, obviously, to your game of choice or setting of choice pretty easily, because a lot of this stuff is pretty neutral. Uh, so it has the notes on play style. You should run Windwraith in whatever play style you prefer, but it was originally designed for an old school style of play with the following, where the following points are assumed to be true. Players will set their own goals. Players receive very, very little or no experience from killing monsters. Monsters will not be balanced to the player level. Uh, wherever it would add more interest, players uh, will interact and describe gameplay to each other instead of rolling dice. The game is dangerous. Scarcity, riddled, riddled flooded world, resource management is focused, and players are encouraged and rewarded for coming up with clever and creative solutions to problems. Here's the uh, table of contents, and it's hyperlinked, which is good. I always have to comment on that. But you get different sections. So you have getting started, how to use this book, and then character creation, because this is, again, it's, it's not just a general setting. It also has... Um, how to play this particular thing. Um, really cool stuff here. You get lots of different ships, and I'll talk about that later. A setting introduction. Few survived the Great Flood, and most knowledge was lost. It's great. You start here, how to use this book. Quick start, if you want to get into playing right away, go to page three. There you will find a starting island scenario where your players will be washed ashore after a shipwreck. Players must explore the island to find resources to build a raft to escape. This will take a couple of sessions. And then you go through them. So quick start, medium start, long start. Here are the quick start rules. Shipwrecked, and really, you just jump right into an adventure. There's an ancient arcane construct with its hit points here. Enceladus, or Enceladus is the island, I believe. And you have a brief uh, point crawl, basically. Travel speed on the island to escape what they need and where they can find it. You have the dome, the ice caverns, the tower, the hot springs, the insect nest, and your starting location. You have the starting island key here, the ice caverns, what, what is in each description with some creature stats. It's The paragraph text is not as easy to read as it could be. Maybe it's the font, maybe it's the way that the page is laid out. Um, I don't know, but it, it isn't the easiest to read at a glance. It's not bad, but... Just the things aren't offset, it's all justified on the left, including all of the heading headers and the flavor text is the same size as the description of the place. And other than the creatures, there isn't any bolding within the paragraph. So there are just a few things that I think could have been done to make the reading a little bit easier as you go through, but it's hardly a, a, a deal breaker. <laughs> really cool character sheet here. I like that. Here's how to generate your character with a bunch of different backgrounds. Uh, and some optional rules. If you want to start with a boon, a curse, and then some starting equipment for that character. How character uh, death works and how you gain experience in this particular setting. Discovering a new island, building a large ship, upgrading a ship, entering a new sea, looting cargo from another ship, etc. So there's a bunch of sort of checks that you can do to, to gain experience. Um, and I think that's, that's really cool. Liberating the trade hub from a faction coup is their 13,000 experience. Defeating a faction is worth 10,000 experience. So there is sort of conflict, and conflict will give you experience, but not necessarily combat. Great piece of art there. And uh, if you get the, the very limited edition, special edition cover, I think this is the front cover, but it's like gold uh, foil. 
It's the one I got when it eventually comes, hopefully. <laughs> you have a demi-human class, sea elves. Uh, the, uh, you have the minimum requirements to play the, the, play the class. Um, what its prime requisite is, its hit dice, all that. And the languages it, it possibly knows, as well as the uh, different saving throws um, and their special abilities. Um, but it's really cool. Great piece of art there. An entomologist, different class. It's a sea elf and entomologist. With the arcane insects that they can make their allies, or they can investigate, or they can use. Different mutations that they can have. It's a great piece of art. That spider tattoo, perhaps. Or maybe it's not a tattoo. <laughs> maybe it's actually crawling down the face. World generation, and this is really this is really really cool. So how do you generate a world? And you have how to develop seas and boundaries between the seas, and how to distribute islands within that sea, how to create key islands and trade routes, and then how to create factions and the cataclysm, um, and and how that works. I think that's that's really cool. Map out how the cataclysmic seeds will grow in each sea and possibly interact with one another. So basically, you know, you want something to be dramatically changing each section of your world. I think that's cool. And then those things will come together and interact in a very interesting way. World map generation, there's randomness, <laughs> how that works. Uh, how the generation works, the scale of the things and the sea archetypes. This is great. So you have the name of the sea, the Leviathan for that uh, region, the cataclysm that's growing or that's going to occur there, and the description of that region. I think that's really cool. So you have the symmetrical sea of storms, right? the, the adrift ascent, the Solitary Singularity Sea. The Restless Rotating Sea. You get sea boundaries. How that works is open boundaries, semi-closed boundaries, closed boundaries. Um, easy to play a campaign where the Game Master changes because you can go from region to region, right? And there aren't that many spoilers. Uh, the seas are fragmented. Portal rafts are rare ancient structures that allow travel between seas. So as you can see, it's a very particular setting but these are ideas you could take for anywhere, and the generation processes, and we'll see the random tables and some of the inspiration ideas you could use for your own settings as well. A blank world map to generate. Sea distribution, currents, and trade winds, and how that works. I think that's really cool. If you want to get down into the nitty gritty of a sea campaign, especially when it's not just like island hopping, but you spend a lot of time on the ocean, then this stuff would be really important. Uh, how to make your first sea and step-by-step -step process of doing it. I think that's really cool how to, uh, you know, what the island density should be. A sparse sea will have roughly 20, 15 islands. A typical sea will have approximately 25, and a dense sea will have 35 or more. You can also avoid deciding precisely how many by labeling most of your map as uncharted. That's really cool. So if you want to be more surprised uh, by your players, by what they do. Here's a template for the sea. It's more evocative than clear, but I think it's fine. You could print this out or use this. Um, and you would have, at a glance, everything important about your sea. The name, the size, the boundaries, the leviathan, the tyrant, the description, the scarce resource, the cataclysm, the climate, the trade winds, and the hex symbol. That's cool. And here's some sea generation for some more customizations. You have the name of the sea, the leviathan, the scarcest resource, and the climate and tone of that region. So the languid leeward labyrinth. The drifting dragon is its leviathan. The scarcest resource are canvas, textiles, and fibers. And the climate and tone is sunken, sprawling ruins close to the crystal clear, translucent surface. That's so cool. It's like the Caribbean Sea. You can look right down and see the uh, ocean floor beneath with ruins that are sprawling beneath. That's really cool. Ocean hexes and sea depth and how that works with the sunlight and what you're going to find down there and how pressure works and all of that stuff. Uh, that's really, really cool. Here's a big sea map two pages of it. Here are the tyrants, right? Because obviously people have taken over. Uh, who are the tyrant soldiers? The description of them, their stats, and their ability. And again, you could roll straight across. You could mix and match. It wouldn't make as much sense, <laughs> but you could. Uh, but you have the, cab the crab cavalry, or the crustacean druids, or the seagull scouts, or the algae assassins, or the illusionist island spies, or the psionic inquisitors. And then you have tyrant generation. Title one, title two, and their agenda two pages of that d30 table the wind wraith a hidden tyrant 
This is great, right? There's a hidden tyrant behind everything, the wind wraith itself, the eponymous wind wraith. A wraith slumbers in a rack beneath a pillar of heavy water where the light cannot reach. It cares for nothing but the offspring of its mind, its thoughts and dreams sculpting violent winds and shadows on the surface above. The timeline of its dreams as these things start to come to be and they affect the world and change things. That's such a cool image there. Perhaps where the wind wraith sleeps. The static empress. It's another one of these tyrants, I assume. The static empress is a wizard who invented a way to forcefully inject her soul into other dimensions using a magical crown she built called the Shock Point Crown. She seeks to collect information about the arcane superstructure underlying reality with every interdimensional delve. She needs an ever-increasing energy fuel as the distance between each delve increases. As her knowledge has grown, so has the power of her spells, allowing her to gain a stronghold on power. Stranglehold on power, excuse me. The keep that she uses, her policy, and the army that she has loyal to her. The cataclysm that will happen as she gains more power. And the stages of that cataclysm and what will happen as each stage occurs. The Trident Queen. Here's another tyrant. The background, the keep, the policy, the army, the cataclysm, and the timeline. The Carrion King. Background, keep, policy, army, <laughs> cataclysm, timeline, and events. God Fragments. Where are they? Tyrant base generation. Got to ger generate a prison island, of course, a capital island, a throne, and the defenses of that island. That's so cool. And I love the fact that there's a prison island and a capital island. It's very, very uh, flavorful and makes a lot of sense. You have the islands that you're going to generate here. I love this too. So the island and what, what kind of island it is. So it's not hyper-specific, but it's generic in the right sort of way, right? So you have the Tyrant's Lair, the Tyrant's Prison, the Trade Hub, the Freshwater Isle, the Cattle Farm, the Grain Farm, the Moving Island, the Mine, the Guild Island, Faction Island, A, B, Rival Crew's Base. Here's an island template. The name, type, description, and an interesting thing here is the font seems sort of more like planted on. I don't know, it's just it's a different type of font than than what we saw on the others. It, everything else is so flavorful and this, this the font here just like goes boom. <laughs> it just looks like, you know, it was added in. Uh, but that's actually fine because it's clear to read. But it's just interesting. An interesting change there. But these pages are very useful and you can do a cool map there at the bottom. Um, the island morphology, the island geology, the island weather patterns, artificial islands and complexes on the ocean surface, in the sky, in the deep sea, magical geology, island generation for resources. What's the basic uh, resource? What's the advanced resource? And what's the rare resource? Island enchantments, D20 table for island enchantments. Island generations of structures on the island. Details, uh, structure traps and enchantments. Populations, who are they? The D20 table, uh, two D20 tables. Traders, guilds and shops, and beliefs about why the world ended. <laughs> That's great. Moving islands, and there are different tables there. Island fish population. And the trade hub, what's going on there, the island name, who it's controlled by, and its history. The details there, the goods and services, the taverns, the food, the drink, the NPCs, the relationships of those NPCs, the faction generation. As you can see, this book is just full of tables. Really great stuff for generating your islands. Really cool. Great toolbox. Uh, here is your ship generator, storm generator, ship sheet, crew page with the diver, the rigger, the navigator, the gunner, the cook. This reminds me, I think you could play a really cool like Skies of Arcadia-esque game here. Skies of Arcadia, one of the things that you would do is you would um, go and recruit various people to fill different roles, and then when you recruited them, you would get a bonus. Your ship would get a bonus, you'd get an extra feature or something like that. And there were usually a couple options scattered throughout the world for each of the roles of the crew. And then you had, of course, your main party, which would go in and actually uh, you know, fight battles and do the story stuff. You could do something like that for this. Give a little benefit for each of these crew roles being filled and then have them recruit people as they go through their campaign. That'd be really cool. Ship classes, the raft, the sloop, the brig, the coffin pod, the tall ship, the trader's boat, the shell marine, the tyrant's navy ship, the tyrant's war galleon. And how ship combat works. There's initiative here, surrender, fleeing, and sinking. Crew deaths, ranged attacks, melee attacks, boarding an enemy ship, spells that each of the ships can use as cannons, essentially, and then ship upgrades. Again, really cool. What you need 
in order to uh, create the thing. And that's really cool because it's very practical. The players could say, okay, hey, here's a list of all the upgrades you can have. Some guys say, hey, I know how to do these things. Well, how do we do it? Well, here's, how, here's what we're going to need. Okay, and the players can now make that part of their campaign to go and find these various things. Like the barrel of holding is a pocket dimension solution. The barrel holds as much as 50 regular barrels. Upgrade your cargo size one point for rations. Your ship upgrades too. Some more things. And the crew. How mutiny scores work, because of course mutinies can happen. And how shares work and experience points, flags, and reputation. The crew rolls and what it does. It's really, really cool. Again, Skies of Arcadia Legends, I'm digging right here. And how do you hire them? <clears throat> What's required? Crew generation, if you want to make up the ship, the flag, the description. The reputation score, the secret weapon, the ship culture, the ship type, the captain, the state of the crew. The upgrades that it has, the cargo on board, the current mission, and the specialist on board. So you roll, there's four different pages and a whole bunch of roles, but you could generate your own ships very quickly on here. That's really cool. Arcane Constructs, Deep Sea Construct Factory, and the different sigils that indicate what that construct is doing. That is so cool. You could turn this into a game here. Um, just, you know, put these on, well, as it says, they're in cubes, and you put those in these constructs, and so you could collect them, you could try to switch them out for a particularly dangerous kill machine or whatever it is. Really cool. Construct cubes, nobody has to make them, but they can be found, and you can, they're blank and written. If they're, upon discovering the first 10 cubes, the player will encounter a crucial item, a copy cube. So there's a whole game here for how to use these, and that's really, really cool. Construct generation, it's hit points, AC, or Thaco. Uh, uh, fuel type, the attack and damage it does in the build. And then the programmed function, the deactivation, how to, how to deactivate it, what the core is, and its special functionality. Once again, you get a very flavorful construct template. Again, it makes that one stand out, the crew template or the ship template, because it just had so many, or the island, whichever one it was, because it was so straightforward. Monster generation. Epipelagic, mesopelagic, bathypelagic, Bathypelagic. Uh, bathypelagic. Both of those are the same. I wonder if that's a mistake. Bathypelagic on both of those. It could be a mistake. Oh no, maybe not. Abyssopelagic, abyssopelagic. Yeah, maybe it's not. It's just you get different levels of the deep sea abyss. I see. Wing, flying, tide pools, beach, sea caves, general island, and island forest, island jungle, arctic island, monster stat generation with extra stuff here. What it fears, what it wants, the color of its te and texture of its, what its saves are. It's attack style, it's Thaco, it's personality, it's magical abilities. And mutations, variations, and behaviors. Just, again, tons and tons of tables. Seaweed dragons, arcane parasites. Tools that you can use, find underwater locations. The people of the deep. The capillary city. Potion recipes, closely guarded secrets. Random treasure, basic advanced rare. Quick reference rules for how to navigate, sailing speed, and ship combat rules. And then printouts and additional resources, procedures, random ship events. So you can put these, obviously, downtime activities. You can put these in a DM screen or in a binder. Treasure hunts and how that works. A world map and pages in the back for all the different templates that you'd need. NPC relationships classes. And then art at the very end if you want to print those out or, or show those to your players. Or just keep them. So that is Wind Wraith, a generative wave crawl setting toolkit. This is awesome. This is really, really cool. And I'm gonna use this when I generate my uh, pirate campaign to generate the islands, the tyrants, the stuff going on. This is great. Now the tone is very specific. The stuff that you're running into is specific, but that's great. Um, I think this along with just, you know, when sea is calling and hot springs island and the, um, the Black Cove. I always forget what that one's called. The Curse of Black Rock or Black Cove or whatever it is. Um, there's just so many different pirate settings that I, pirate tools and and uh, adventures and campaign settings and and toolkits that I've collected over the years. That it seems like, <laughs> I mean, gosh, after my current campaign, after Dolmenwood, after Gods of the Forbidden North, I'm gonna be running a pirate campaign. So it's gonna be you know <laughs> years in the future, but that gives me plenty of time to develop the setting. All right, guys. Well, I hope this has been interesting. As I said uh, before, I'll put links below to where you can get the limited edition print run and also the, the PDF on DriveThruRPG. I'll see you guys all in another video.